going ultra light, seven foot Daiwa Presso, 1000 size, this is fun carbon X reel, really simple stuff. And of course, the little $5 net uh, that you get from Big Five to pick up some sand crabs. There's sand crabs all over the beach and there's some soft shells here and there. We've got the slider, one ounce coin weight. I like coin weights because they slide around. They don't really roll and tumble like the pyramid weights. And that's what we're gonna rig up today. With like a four, five foot, six pound liter on a, like a size six bait holder hook. So let's uh, rig up the rod. Let's put the uh, sand crab on the hook, put it in the water. Let's see if we can get a fish to commit. And maybe I'll be able to go home with my first surf perch since before the pandemic. That's like 18 months. And uh, we'll see if we can do what I used to do, um, catch surf fish. Here we go. I don't know if you're like me, but if you're old enough to have CDs and remember CDs, you probably have an old CD case and I've repurposed my old CD cases as hook sleeves and leader sleeves. So in one, I have all kind of different rigs pre-set up for the surf, pre-tied, and I kind of just loop them a few times over on themselves and stick them in the sleeve. And so that way, when I need a leader, instead of spending time and tying one up, just pull one out of the sleeve and it's ready to go. Spent a few minutes scooping up sand crabs, and one thing I love about this beach is that there's always a lot of soft shells. Soft shells aren't a specific breed of mole crab or sand crab or sand flea, or whatever you want to call them. They're just ones that are kind of like just molted, and their shell hasn't gotten a chance to get hard yet. So a little squishy, still a little slippery. Um, really simple to hook. So their eggs are normally right here. If their eggs were there, well, I'm gonna rig them up. Um, I like I normally would, even if he had eggs, he doesn't have eggs, or she doesn't have eggs. Simply take the point, put it right behind the head, and hook it up just like that. Now these soft shells get inhaled by surf perch. The water's really calm today, um, and that's why I'm only throwing a one ounce. So with this one ounce and this like four, five foot, six pound test leader, and the way I rigged it up on the hook, if there's a surf perch, it's gonna gulp it up right away and with a slight line, Lightweight, I should feel it immediately and be able to set the hook. So let's cast this out. Water is pretty mild. Looks like it's a low tide, incoming tide maybe. And uh, we're just gonna cast it out like 20, 30 feet. Doesn't even have to be that far. First surf perch cast in quite a long time. Let's see if we can turn it into a fish. Here we go. Oh, fish on. Look at that, first minute of fishing. And we got our first little surf fish. That's pretty decent. Bring him in with the current. Oh, what the heck? <laughs> Crab on, oh man. Got a bunch of little bait sealers today, I guess. Oh, look at that. Desert crabs, of course, aren't in season. Oftentimes, you'll get these little, what I call bait stealers, coming by, checking out your presentation. And, of course, because this guy is not in season and definitely undersized, we're going to try to de-hook him a little hard with all these claws flipping around. Not our first time handling crabs as bite catches. Man, I thought it was a good size surf perch. I was wondering why the fight kind of died. Let's toss him back in the water. Maybe we'll catch him in a couple years when he's legal. All right, definitely have a little fish on. It's gonna be little. It's probably gonna be a little walleye surf perch. Little fight, little fight. But hey, at least it's the right species. All right, let's see what we got. Oh, little, little tiny bar. But look at that. First surf perch in like, geez, I don't know how long. A little small to keep. That was our last piece of bait, so no problem. Got our sand net, of course, at my hip. We got unlimited bait at our feet. That's the nice thing about surf perch fishing. You buy one of these, you can get a lot of bait to catch a bunch of these. Let's see if we can get slightly bigger ones. Normally, if there's big ones, it's okay to pass the hook through the head once, but with these little bait sealers, I like to pass the hook through twice. So we're gonna go behind the head where the antenna are, 
turn that hook and go as far back as I can. The nice thing about these bait holder hooks is they have these barbs on the shank near the eye where if you slide this guy a little forward and up, expose that point, um, it's going to catch those barbs so he doesn't slide off as easy. And I mean, you saw how small that first surf perch was. So if there's a big one, he's definitely going to inhale that whole thing. That little guy tried to and this hook caught him. So let's cast out, see if we can catch a slightly bigger one. What do you guys think? Crab bait or should we let them go? Yeah, they're not too big around these parts. You know what? He's so small. I think we're just going to let them go. It's a multi-species action. Nope. Oh, this is an unbarred. Look at that. Man, these guys are like not much bigger than shiners out here. So bars are the ones with the lines, unbards are the ones with no lines. Oh. Look at that fish handling skills 101. Sorry, buddy. Go ahead and toss them back. Can't seem to get over the six inch hump out here. Maybe the next one. Monster. Oh, that's a good one. All right, that's better. Ooh, that's a good one. So this is a walleye, and you can tell because it has giant eye. That's a pretty decent one for around here. Really felt that one. <clears throat> Very really felt that guy. Let that guy go. of the day. They're in there for sure. cutter I think so one all right we'll call that final boom check that out not big barbs, not big red tails, but perfect for the pan. Pan size surf fish, pan fish, from the surf, whatever you want to call it. I got mine today. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.